see. Asian women find white wen- white men more attractive than Asian men. No, that's a spicy hate fact. That is a spicy, spicy hate Honorary. Fact. Yes, that is a... <laughs> Honorary hate fact. <laughs> Ooh, we have the alt-libertarian with us. Hello? Hello? Sorry, I have my mic muted. What's up, guys? Nothing how's it much. Going? Hey, man, how's it going? We were uh, just doing hate facts. What kind of hate fact would you like? Can you hear him? Oh, his mic's muted. How's it going, man? Do you want a Do you want a hate fact? Your Your mic's muted. Yeah, I, I remuted my mic on accident. Sorry. There we go. Uh, yeah, here we go. So, uh, yeah, my hate fact is. Uh, the Jada Franson thing you all were just talking about. Uh-huh. It was a uh, it was a video that she got thrown in jail for, and the video was uh, berating a Muslim man who had raped uh, raped someone. Oh, there's so, nothing wrong with berating a piece of shit. Oh no 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 no! In England, it's okay to rape people if you are an immigrant, but it is illegal to berate them for it. Welcome to 2018 England. Was the guy actually let off the hook, or was he? Did he have a, a, a uh, pending trial or something? I'm I'm not sure, but okay. It, known fact that he raped someone. They were berating him for it on video, and uh, they got sent to jail. Well, he was just providing cultural exchange. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he was correcting her for uh, not making the couscous properly. I, uh, I I did a gab the other day saying that, um, you know, in South Africa, white people are having their rights stripped uh, in not so great Britain, as I'm going to call it from now on. Uh, <laughs> it, yeah, we're going to call America the absolute states of America. Yeah. <laughs> it, and in not so great Britain, Jada Franson's going to jail for berating a rapist. And meanwhile, conservatives here in America are just glad that they're barely hanging on to Texas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So what, what does uh, being an alt-libertarian mean? So originally it was meant to be a revision of the libertarian message. I, wanted, I, I saw the flaws in the libertarian message. And I didn't think that the flaws came from libertarian theory, but just, you know, a, a perverse the people. Correct. And so I wanted to I wanted to revise the message. But uh, through a year, a year and a half of dealing with the Libertarian Party and libertarians, uh, it, it's very clear that it's time to, to move on from from that and focus elsewhere. So uh, I'm now focusing more on the alt part of the alt libertarian movement, and that is to say, I am uh, now focusing on solidifying the libertarian to alt right pipeline. Uh, it, that that's kind of a meme that's talked about, you know, the libertarian to alt right pipeline. But I want to solidify that into something very real, and I want to suck the libertarians that have any common sense out of that. Uh, trap okay very cool um is it safe to say you want a wall oh yeah yeah definitely uh closed borders um for sure okay uh me me and uh me and orwell had a uh, conversation before i think it was uh episode 18 of uh, uh what what's that series called orwell oh well and good all well and good, yeah. Uh, I think it's episode 16 or episode 18. Um, we, we talked about uh, borders and some other things. I, uh, I re-listened to it the other day. That was the first time I had ever uh, done like a long forum conversation or interview or anything like that. And I was really nervous. So I thought I did bad, but I rewatched it the other day. And it was actually a really good conversation. Yeah, we, we had a few uh, technical difficulties, but it was all sorted out. I remember that. And also it was after Charlottesville too. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I'm I'm excited about uh, Unite the Right too this summer. I'll be there. I'm gonna have. Uh, oh, gonna, is that actually happening? I, I, as of now, yes. 
Is um, it going to be at Charlottesville? Yes. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. Tough for respect. Oh, 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 oh even better. Uh, ideally, it will be on the anniversary of the first Unite the Right. Damn. This will be one giant chip out, man. <laughs> Woo. Yeah, um, uh, I'm. I'm not sure what to think about it, but I mean, <laughs> that, that's some ballsy shit. Well, well the deputy mayor is some like black communist of Charlottesville. Yeah, and and didn't the uh, didn't the black sheriff have to step down after Unite the Right shit show? Oh, uh, I think so. Oof. Yeah, it, yeah. it, it wow. was definitely a shit show. I didn't even plan on doing any like videos or anything i just went there to to just be there and uh, to listen to the people speak and everything and um like it was such a shit show i just had to pull out my phone and uh take some videos and uh those videos kind of uh blew up on facebook a little bit are, are you gonna wear like a medieval chain armor or something <laughs> well no so so that's what i was gonna say last year i didn't expect to do any videos this year I'm going to get someone like a college student who's, you know, uh, in college for, you know, video something. And I'm just going to get him to follow me around all day and video the whole thing. Mm. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. This yeah. This is one of the piss bottles. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if I'll be able to avoid <laughs> anything, but uh, I'll at least have it on video. You could call it enhanced protesting. <laughs> Hold on. I, I had uh, I had had a couple other uh, things I had jotted down um, from from the meme stream earlier. I was in the chat. Uh, you all mentioned North Korea. Mm -hmm. uh, I wrote a piece on uh, North Korea, the uh, the our situation with North Korea uh, last year. And I don't think much has changed. Uh, the, rhetoric, the rhetoric's changed a lot, but I don't think the situation has changed much. Um, and I was just wondering your all's thoughts on uh, what, what Trump should do. I mean, I, I think we all know what North Korea wants to do or what they have to do. They have to keep the nukes. They have to kick the can down the road. They have to wait until uh, Trump is no longer there and hope that, you know, they get some cuck. Um, but what do you think that Trump should do? Hmm. I, I mean, the shit. What was I gonna say? I I lost my train of thought. I, I, I'll, go, I'll, I'll go first and basically say I think Trump's gonna try to milk it for everything it's worth politically, as far mm -hmm. as a short-term political victory. Um, and that's all it's gonna be worth. Um, as far as real change, as far as nuclear North Korea, um, giving up its nukes. That's not going to happen. He's just going to wait Trump out. For me personally, I would love to see the Korean Peninsula be reunited and the have Korea? the whole. Yeah, make Korea great again. Make Korea one again. And South Korea could make a shitload of money from doing that because there's a lot of resources in North Korea that, you know, they don't even have the equipment to mine. So, you know, it costs less than the reunification of Germany. So ideally, I'd like to see that. But what Trump would do, I, I have no idea. Yeah, my best answer is that we need to make North Korea um, dependent on trade with the rest of the world. We need to make it advantageous for them. So kind of a situation where, you know, the Soviet Union uh, was using Siberian wheat which has like a 60 day growing cycle and a, 50, uh, a 60 day growing cycle, but the growing season was only 58 days. So they always had this kind of awkward situation. And maybe if we could have got them hooked on American produce, we could have um, avoided the cold war to some extent, at least and that's kind of our situation with China where we avoid a cold war. And instead we have, you know, in, in the formal sense, and instead we have an economic, um, struggle instead which i think is preferable to pointing nukes at each other and and uh i i think you know you know that they really have to they have to play hardball with them as far as if you want food aid you have to open up your market just a little bit just get your your foot in the door just just a little bit you know don't don't make them do the whole thing right away 
uh, just you know, incrementalism with him, uh, set the precedent that uh, people are are used to consuming good X from the U.S. or the U.K. or China or Japan or South Korea, and um, get them to uh, you know work in factories owned by these companies and buy things from these companies. And um, I think I think that's the best answer that I have. Make them watch anime. <laughs> also, uh, just going back to the original theme of the conversation, why do you think that there is this so-called libertarian to alt-right pipeline? Do you think that lib as libertarianism seems to be uh, almost a uh, strictly white phenomenon? Do you think that's maybe the reason why this exists? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, libertarians are just uh, pre-woke. I think would be a good way at looking at them. They they're starting to understand um, the the mechanisms of the problem, uh, but they they don't really uh, they don't have the perspective yet to really properly identify the sources of the the problems. Okay, so you, go ahead. So you don't believe in diversity as a strength. <laughs> wow, bigot. <laughs> <laughs> well, the diversity of markets is good, but to to have a, a diverse market, you have to have separate entities in the market. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so to, just to just to kind of because uh, that's that's a really autistic way of putting it. <laughs> um, so it. If there were, if America were to break down and there were to be a white ethno state and a black ethno state within the borders of modern America, right, then those two states would definitely interact with one another and they would definitely benefit from the transactions between one another. But until they're allowed to be separate entities, then they cannot be separate things brought to the market. So by blending them together, you are hindering the market. Hmm. So, what kind of um, libertarian are you? Are you a minarchist, uh, ANCAP? Um, well, I, I self-describe as a propertarian. Um, a okay. propertarian. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, that, that's a new one. Well, are, are any of you all familiar with uh, Kurt Doolittle? I am. Mm. No. Kind of. I, I, I highly recommend Kurt Doolittle. I, I mean, I I, uh, I I think he's our Karl Marx, and and more people should. Uh, Does he have any relation? Should. Does he have any relation to Doctor Doolittle? He is Doctor Doolittle. <laughs> <laughs> well, what does he say that's so revolutionary? I'm sorry. What does he say that's so revolutionary? Um, he is. He is. Um, okay, so so if I'm working on the libertarian to alt-right pipeline, that would be in a very cultural sense. Um, he has been working for years on laying the uh, the philosophical foundation. Uh, I mean, it's even bigger than a political theory. I would say it, it, it's it's metapolitical. It is um, it, it is a it, it is a philosophy uh, for. The, uh, to lay as a foundation for that. Okay, that, that sounds very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, could you go into more detail, or? Well, yeah. So, I mean, it, we need a philosophical framework uh, underlining our political philosophies, and that has been the um, that that's been the problem with neoconservatism. Right. Uh, and, and the breakdown of neoconservatism is going to be based on the contradictions of neoconservatism. Right. So if, if you do not have a, a proper philosophical foundation, then it will not last. And um, that, that's one thing that I really hope that the alt right understands is that the alt right is currently a a collection of groups and a movement. But without a philosophical foundation, it will not last. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's very, it's very much a coalition of very different, uh, different, different kinds of people. It's been kind of splintering apart, though, in some ways. 
Um, I, I yeah. saw today that uh, there's going to be a debate between Jared Howe and Matt Heimbach, and I'm very excited about that. Wait, who's Jared Howe? He's a uh, he's a he's an Australian libertarian dude who's pretty alt right. I've been on this show and he's been on mine in the past. Uh, if you're not in libertarian circles, there's a chance you haven't heard of him. He's friendly with the TRS guys. I gotcha. Yeah, that would be um, exciting because. You know, I'm not really the biggest fan of Heimbach. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I, it, should, it should be good because uh, Jared's very clever and he's uh, very libertarian-ish. Mm-hmm. And, and, and he's also a, a pro-white advocate. So um, it, I, I think that the, the reason why I'm very excited about it is I think that there's a good discussion to be had uh, about what is best for uh white advocates, because I think there's a lot of counter-signaling uh, libertarians or pro-capitalist, uh, pro-white people, and um, I, I think that that's a good debate to be had um, about whether, at least whether people who are pro-white and socialist should be counter-signaling pro-capitalist, uh, if nothing else. Yeah, because, yeah. you know, I, I still believe in capitalism, obviously, Um I don't want socialism, but for white people only. You know, that just sounds silly to me. And, and I, I understand. I understand their arguments and their, you know, uh, the the difference between people like me and people like them really just comes down to um, a different value system. Um, mm-hmm. and, and that's fine because our interests are the same. Um, but I, I don't think that. Our side should be counter signaling their side, and I don't think that their side should be counter signaling our side. And for those of you who don't know, um, Matthew Heimbach is a Strasserist, which means he's uh, pretty much a uh, a uh, Nat Bull. Nasbull. <laughs> Nasbull. Nasbull gang. Wait, does he actually consider himself a Strasser, Strasserist? I think he he's, said Strasserist, yeah. He's, he's a very open national socialist, though. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, for, for those of you who don't know, Strasser was kicked out of the national socialists for being too socialist. So, <laughs> so he, I'm he's pretty sure bit, his brother was killed, too. Oh, wow. Uh, but, but, yeah, he's a little bit beyond the mere, merely being... Um, uh, <laughs> Merely being a no- national socialist, mm-hmm. and, and and I want to say I understand someone who says, "Look, you know, I, I don't care about this autistic, you know, capitalism, free market stuff. I just care about you know me, my people, and my interest, and and that stuff. And if socialism is best for my people, then so be it. I I, I get that sentiment, uh, sentiment, and, and I'm not and I, I, I'm not counter signaling that. I never would, um, but my. Pr- my issue is when those people counter signal the pro capitalist people and yeah. want to make a pro white movement without those people. I think that you are making a pro white movement that is tossing out a lot of things that make white culture white culture, especially American culture, American culture, white American culture. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. I, I get kind of the feeling that. You know, as Richard Spencer said on uh, Christopher Cantwell's uh, podcast, that we need to put aside the economics so we can talk about demographics. And now that we're putting aside the the, the, the economics, now they want to talk about the economics, and they expect us to keep quiet about it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Go ahead. Oh no, that 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 was pretty much all I had to say on uh, on on that thought. Yeah, it just it seems a little bit. Uh, Unfair to me, yeah. Um, uh, so what do you think Trump needs to do now to um, to protect uh, the white majority in the U.S.? Well, I, I think we all see uh, borders and immigration as as the first thing, uh, but but it's hard, and those are slow moving. And I, I have I have my doubts some days on if. Uh, if the corrections that are needed in immigration can be made in a quick enough time frame to um, to, to fix the problem. And uh, it, it, like we might be past the tipping point, uh, 
in, in which case these um, these ethno nationalist ideas are going to be less uh, you know less like out there in uh, hypothetical land and more in like how do we how do we sort this mess out the, the uh, I, I think that the alt right might be not might be I think that the alt right will be looked at as visionaries in 20 30 years yeah yeah um it, it's kind of like uh, watching South Africa right now and we're seeing a lot of people in South Africa who were in favor of ending apartheid now realize that, that was a massive mistake mm-hmm and uh, you're seeing even people who are were in the ANC, you know, um, now realizing that oh, we're we're checkmated. Um, I don't know if they use that term. <laughs> the, the the thing we fought for for nearly a hundred. Well, I'm trying to think. When, yeah, the ANC has been around for like a hundred years, I think. The, the thing we fought for for a hundred years is now just ruined within 25 years of it being implemented. <laughs> fucking amazing. Yeah, and of course this is all because of an information embargo that you're not allowed to talk about the biological facts of the matter. Mhm. Uh except on the internet. So I uh I met I ran into a uh a man from South Africa uh at my workplace the other night. And um this dude was you know, he, he was pretty apolitical and, uh, he, he had a, uh, a black girlfriend and, uh, w- we got to talking about the situation in South Africa and, and I was just kind of asking him, you know, questions and I didn't tell him anything about my, my views or anything. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I asked him if he thought that there was a long-term solution in South Africa that included, uh, the the whites and the blacks living together, and uh, he he quickly, without hesitation, said, "Absolutely not." And, and this is, <laughs> wow, this is this is an apolitical guy who has a black girlfriend. You know the the whole nine, and, and he he just without hesitation said, "There's no way that the whites and the blacks can can live together in South Africa." Did he want uh, the whites moving to? Um... Europe or to America or something or he's pretty apolitical. He doesn't give a shit. He got the fuck out of there. Oh, okay. With and and I think that any any white person there with uh, the resources should do what he did and get the fuck out of there. Yeah, and, and I mean, it seems like a you know a, quite a few have already done that. Like quite a few just left before you know the ship is sinking. It, it, if I was there right now, I, I would, and, and I was just poor as dirt, I would sell the last of my possessions and leave the country with the clothes on my back. Mm-hmm. Well, to be honest, I used to know a lot of South Africans who escaped post apartheid, and a lot of them were pro Mandela. It, 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 <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. So how can you be pro the guy who basically, well, made your country inhospitable? Yeah, I mean, I have seen some, like, people saying, well, maybe they deserve it because some of these people that, e- even the ones that moved out, say that, um, oh, we still like Mandela. He was a great guy. Yeah, racial unity, blah, blah, blah. I'm a rainbow nation. So. Well, it's, uh, it's what I've been saying for a while, that, that this isn't a rational idea that these people are putting forward. They, they're, you know, operating from a fear response. They understand that there will be huge consequences if they actually explain that Mandela uh, was a terrible person. Uh, mm-hmm. now not only merely incorrect about things, but he was uh, his wife was a torturer. Oh yeah, <laughs> and and it, like in the same way that it's kind of like an autistic libertarian thing to like expect all Americans to understand the issues with the Federal Reserve. Um, you know, it's kind of like a uh, a very um, cold economic way of looking at it to to think like, oh, these people should just uh, vote with their feet and get out of there. But like, I mean, when you're born into it and that's all you know, um, you know, the 
the unknown of, you know, leaving to somewhere else where you know nothing and no one with nothing. And, you know, that, that, that seems more daunting than the hell hole that you currently live in. So I, I, I just, I hate it for those people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hmm. So, so what do you think of the system of the uh, situation in Europe right now? As far as political parties, we uh, just had the huge uh, right wing win for um, for Italy, and uh, I think it looks good. What, what do you think? Yeah, uh, I, I'm not as well versed on European politics as you all are. Uh, I guess I'm more versed than a normie, but um, I, I think that uh, the the wave of populism and just the the increased awareness of identitarianism uh, going across Europe right now is is a sign of the future. And the more that the left pushes, the more that, and, you know, I say the left, uh, the more the J-left pushes, um, oh. <laughs> the, the, more, <laughs> the more they push, uh, the, the more... Um, these identitarian movements and uh, nationalist movements and populist movements. And, you know, it, these are all names for the same thing. Um, and, and that's why I say libertarians are pre-woke. Uh, all of these people are starting to understand uh, the issues. Uh, they just don't get the complete picture yet. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I think some of them get the complete picture, though, like, the guy who was just elected governor of Lombardy, which is in um, northern Italy, where he said that we must defend the white race, like along those lines. I know I'm massively paraphrasing. And did he yeah. win in a landslide after saying that? Oh, yeah. He won in a landslide, too, which is e even better, to be honest. There, there are some asterisks on that, that it's a uh, coalition victory, and I'm not sure how... Oh, oh no the the governor's seat was um that that was just a single party victory so oh, that's okay. even better. Mm -hmm. Okay, well yeah yeah yeah. I mean, can you imagine running for that in uh, somewhere in the union? I, I mean, that would be uh, that'd be insane. <laughs> kind of reminds me of the uh, situation in Brazil too. You all were talking earlier how it's went. You know, like the the situation there is like left and far left. But it's actually created a lot of uh, reactionary, far right wing libertarians, uh, Hoppians, and stuff like that. Uh, Hoppa is as popular in Brazil, or actually probably more popular in Brazil than in America. Uh, mm. now. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that. It's really encouraging. Yeah, yeah so you have a huge amount of in Brazil because, well, the, all they know is uh, Fifty Shades of Red over there. We were saying earlier that Brazil's p political landscape has gotten to the point where you have a choice between different brands of extreme left politics. You have nothing else. And, like, the centrist party or the center-left party are just called Nazis. Wait, just um, curious. What are the demographics of the Hoppians in Brazil? They're mostly in the South, and <laughs> as you could expect. Oh, okay. So white. I, I figured. <laughs> the South is is pretty white in Brazil, and they mm -hmm. had a large um, movement to secede from Brazil because Brazil, the rest of Brazil, is just a parasite class on them. Oh yeah, it, it really is. And it, it's, it's a it's shame that crime ridden. It, it's a shame that Brazil is in the state that it's in. I mean, who knows what could be really done about it. Well, um, wolves come to mind. Uh, yeah. You know, speak, speaking of the whole Hoppian reaction to, um, you know, the fact that Brazil is a leftist shithole and a multicultural one, in Iran, there's like, you know, some identitarian groups. Now, I'm not sure how big they are, and I've, I've heard about these groups from, you know, one guy before where he said that, you know, there's more identitarian groups because the Iranian government has pushed ethnic mixing and, um, you know, a lot of Iranians are crypto uh, Zoroastrians. 
So some of them aren't really big fans of Islam. So you have that going on that I found interesting. Mm. Yeah, I've heard about that, that there's a little bit of a, you know, revival movement in uh, in Persia and Iran. I, I know that that they've actually been able to keep their eternal flame, um, the Zoroastrian eternal flame, alive for several thousand years. Like there's mm-hmm. been a guy tending this one fire in uh, in Iran, despite the, the the Islamic conquest, which is pretty impressive. Yeah. So, um, anything else we should uh, uh, know, uh, alt libertarian? I was just going to quickly add, what do you guys think about the claim of anti-Semitism launched against Trump for calling Cohen a globalist? <laughs> oh, there's a lot more we can go on that subject alone because there is also the Polish issue. I think it's pretty funny that they are, uh, are I mean, I think the accusation itself is anti-Semitic. <laughs> How dare they associate the Jewish people with filthy globalists? Oh, yeah. I mean, th- this is very hateful. I think uh, we need to contact the SPLC. I-, I said the same thing, and I got blocked by some, like, journalists. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it-, it was just really funny seeing the reaction to that. Th- then you also have the uh, State Department recently putting diplomatic sanctions against Poland over their uh, Holocaust law or something. Now, the for those... The U.S. did? Yeah. Oh, it, damn. Because, you know, you still have Obama holdovers in the State Department that need to be purged. But for those who don't know about this Polish law, uh, ever since Poland became more right-wing and nationalistic, you had certain people starting to, dec- like, blame Poland for having death camps built on its soil, basically. And... <laughs> It, like you just look look at the logic behind it. It's like oh, you're, you're blaming this country that was occupied by another country for death camps that it didn't even build. So they started saying like oh, Polish death camps. Like look at what they did to us and all this. So Poland decided to pass a law where it made it illegal to blame Poland for the Holocaust. And now people are saying that it's a Holocaust denial law or some shit. It's really ridiculous that they even got into this situation in the first place. Because we all know why they did. It's these people trying to shame them for, well, ever since that Independence Day march, that really got under their skins. Yeah, yeah, they... um... (laughs) <laughs> we're trying to say that they were that these Polish nationalists were a bunch of Nazis. It's like, uh, I think these guys wouldn't care for Nazism too much. <laughs> the funny thing is, too, some of them were Polish phalangists, and the phalangists in Poland fought against the Nazis during World War II. Jeez. Yes, not 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 every fascist group got along. Well, Nazis weren't really fascist anyway, but yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, um, we need to ask Souza to school Keck's army on on his uh, choice of words. Oh yeah, D- 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 Dinesh to Souza is a retard. <laughs> I'll just say it there. <laughs> Barack Obama's a fascist. <laughs> oh god, that that picture of Barack Obama in Benito Mussolini's outfit was just. I actually. Why? I- I actually like Dinesh D'Souza, but ironically, I like Dinesh D'Souza <laughs> in the same way that I like Alex Jones, and I mean the exact same way. I mean, Alex Jones is at least funny, despite being kind of a cuck at times, and, and leftists just, like, they hate the guy. Like, they really hate this guy, and, and he's just a fucking water merchant who makes me laugh. If you use Dinesh D'Souza arguments with liberals, like they're like on the street, you know, just in normal day to day interactions, their heads just explode. You like it, it, it's very easy to red pill someone after you use a Dinesh D'Souza argument. To <laughs> so alt libertarian, do you think that they, that uh, 
kind of Hoppians and Propertarians and right libertarians in general should try to form their own community or should we try to gold pill the, the alt-right community or what do you think? So Hoppe has a good piece out for the Hoppians uh, on um, the, the steps to achieve. Uh, I, I think it's called uh, – what, what must be what done? Must do what must be done. What, yeah, there we go. Yeah, what must be done? Uh, what must be done? Uh, details, you know, uh, d- details a good step by step plan uh, on a small scale to do that. Um, but uh, I don't think that. Um, so I would say that once you understand Hoppe, uh, I, I think that it's a fair critique to say that um, it his. Hoppianism is a little bit utopian, right? And so, to me, propertarianism is is good for post Hoppians. Uh, okay. It is it, it is taking it is taking those understandings and those principles and those values and applying them realistically to the current system. So, what would you say is the difference between Hoppianism and propertarianism? So I, I think uh, a good way of looking at it would be uh, consider the nation a covenant community, mm-hmm. and, and that's a that's a very uh, Hoppianism to propertarianism for dummies way of looking at it. Just look at the nation as the covenant community. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, I was already doing that. I was calling myself a Hoppian, so. Um, well, see, uh, under under a you know a, a Hoppian interpretation, it like it, it, here, here's my problem, and, and I want to have a discussion with uh, Christopher Chase Rachel's about this. Uh, I'm going to be I'm going to be starting a uh, podcast series called the LARP Show, which will be the Libertarian to Alt Right Pipeline Show. Um, and, and and I hope to have CCR on to have a discussion about this. Um, it, I, to me, I, to uh, under my understanding of a hop, uh, hopianism, if, if someone objects to being in the covenant community, right, then they either have to remove themselves. Or be physically removed. Well, in, in a in a current situation, that would mean taking away people's citizenship uh, from them. The government taking people's natural or the, or their rights away from them. Uh, that that is fascism, right? Yeah, it's authoritarian. So so, yeah. so, so to me, a a realistic application of Hoppianism turns into fascism. <laughs> I think I think you may have just got Andrew England's attention that go on. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and that is my case for a libertarian to alt right pipeline. Well I I think with Hoppe it would be based on what are the rules of the covenant community. So your you know, your purchase of a house or your rental of a house would be um, a a distinct agreement. But, I mean, I could be wrong on this. Uh, It's basically like a homeowner's association. Yeah. But but the thing is, when when I'm in a homeowner's association and then I have a child and then I give him my house and then I die and then my child does not want to participate in the HOA, well, then what? And, and, And it's the same thing on a massive scale for a country. When you have all yeah. these, when you have all these shit libs running around bitching about, you know, uh, wanting a communist state and everything, well, then what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I mean, the 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 agreement has to be attached to the house. You know, it can't be attached to the person. Um. <clears throat> but but yeah, um, yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah, I think we're all in. Um, in agreement that America needs better HOA laws. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, the, the HOA is a, is a, can be a pain in the ass, 
Mm-hmm. But, um, but 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 it's 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 a great way to conceptualize, uh, you know, uh, the consent yeah. thing with the state. Yeah, it, you know, having borders, but not having an entity ruling over you. It's it's legally co-equal with you. It's not uh, your ruler, but it has borders. Yeah, I I, I just think that. Um, getting autistically trapped up in consent when it comes to the state is really counterproductive to what anybody's, you know, natural yeah. goals are here. Yeah. I, I, I get so annoyed with ANCAPs who do this because, well, I think they don't understand that there's an emergency happening right now that unless we can fix the demographic decline, uh, we won't have anything resembling Western civilization at all or any civilization i mean they're going they're not going to be able to keep up the technology that that we left behind when we're gone um just from iq decline and um that we have to use the institutions that we have now and and they're just kind of spurging out and uh being goofy about well it's not it's not consensual there therefore you can't use <laughs> wall it. So, Cox. yeah I, yeah wall Cox. It's, like, it's like yeah um okay the, 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 this is the institution we have now. We have to use this, but I would like to move to something a little bit more uh, and cappy. But um, George Soros, George Soros of all people, has a, a very, very good critique of uh, uh, of these people, and and he calls them free market fundamentalists. And uh, it, it really is a good critique, even coming from George Soros. Uh, people who have watched my previous conversation with Orwell will know that I myself am a former leftist communist. Um, mm. Yeah, I uh, what what red pilled me out of that uh, initially was the assassination of Muammar Gaddafi, and then uh, I started reading economics books because I got into uh, Ron Paul. After the assassination of Muammar Gaddafi, <laughs> you were a communist before you actually started reading economics. Absolutely, books. That, I, I, say, I say that I say that a lot. Uh, I was a communist, and then I started reading economics. Uh, but but what actually red pilled me was um, I started getting into uh, Ron Paul after the assassination of Gaddafi. Um, yeah, because there's anti-interventionism. Yeah, yeah, and um, but so so I have a very you know, deep understanding of the left and leftist ideology, postmodernism and communism and all that. And that's why I see the issues with libertarianism as it stands today. Like um, even Hoppe himself is a student of, you know, the Frankfurt school or he's from Frankfurt. I think he's a student. He's an ex Marxist. Yeah. Um, And and, I mean, his, his whole theory is, in my opinion, it's using postmodernism against itself, but it's still rooted in postmodernism. Um, so, and 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 I understand, you know, the the dangers of these things being a former leftist, um, and, and, but but also being a former leftist, I, I understand the critiques that these people make of their opposition, and one of those, like I said, is George Soros calling these people free market fundamentalist. And when uh, Trump issues a tariff on steel and aluminum, and all of these people start autistically reading about a small tariff on these things, that really means nothing it, uh, to, to the uh, at the end. So like a car will go up $45, $45 the, a car to you know, keep I thought... America's steel industry. And, and these Free market fundamentalists are ringing about it. I, yeah. I thought the best about that was um, Eric Erickson tweeting, oh, your beer's going to be more expensive. Yeah, an extra six cents a can. Who gives a fuck? And, and, and I, th- I think it's not even like, I, I think the calculations that have put it at like six cents a can are figuring it up as if like the entire, like 100% of the cost of a can of beer or Coke or whatever is aluminum and and aluminum is a very small percentage of the cost of a can of coke so like it it really i I think it's not even a cent that would that would go up in the cost of production on a can of coke or beer or whatever uh but even if it was six cents even if it was 60 cents if it was a dollar to to keep america's 
aluminum industry or steel industry or, or whatever, that, that's a small price to pay. And, and to, to bitch about that and to counter signal and, you know, re out and all of that stuff, um, it, it, it's, it's beyond autistic. It's, it's just stupid. Yeah. Yeah. They, they do that. You know, there's a thing in game theory. It's very similar to the NAP, the non-aggression principle, but it's a little bit different. And that's that you should treat people the way that they treat you. And this gets the best results. And they've, they've done many different formulas, millions of different formulas, or at least thousands of different formulas, but millions of, of iterations. And this appears to be the best uh, pattern of behavior to get the best results. So that if you treat people the way that they treat you, they will treat you better. And that means that in tariffs, if you want open borders, you should just have, as a policy, reciprocal tariffs. That we will put a tariff on whatever you put a tariff on our stuff on. And, um, you know, reciprocity is a powerful thing. And, you know, we really haven't pushed back against any of this. And so it's it's really gotten uh, very high. I think I think Japan has, I, I want to say, over a thousand percent steel tariff. You know, something like that. I'm not, I'm not quite sure. So earlier when I mentioned propertarianism, uh, I, I was trying to keep it simple and not get too uh, autistically into it. Um, but you, you bring up reciprocity. And reciprocity is a very uh, big difference between um, hoppianism or libertarianism and, uh, you know, in, in, the, in that sense, and propertarianism. Um, propertarianism uh, includes reciprocity, whereas just a strict adherence to the NAP uh, does not provide reciprocity. It's just, you know, buyer beware. And... Um, when you get into the deep, you know, uh, foundational differences, it, it is a difference between um, aristocracy and, uh, as Kurt Doolittle puts it, the nap is the ethics of shepherds. Uh, and and that, that is where it comes from. Uh, and it, a, a better society is founded on aristocracy uh, that provides uh, liberty through permission and... Um, reciprocity through property rights of course mm, yeah and, and and this is this is what has allowed the west and specifically america to prosper in a very short amount of time we have ascended to the top of human history and so when these white advocates want to be socialist and counter signal capitalist i think they're throwing out the baby with the bathwater when it comes to their white advocacy. Can I just say something really quickly? I, I, I think that there is some maybe genetic or cultural reasons why some people favor certain economic systems over others. Just looking at the way people vote, and it seems that these kinds of values can be hereditary to some extent. And just looking at how that only 11% of Anglo-Saxons that went to America could hack the, the, the quasi-libertarian system, whereas something like 37% of other continental Europeans couldn't hack it. Now, you wouldn't see such a huge inflow of Central American or Third World immigrants coming into America. And we know that people from certain areas consume welfare at rates of 50% plus per group. So without the welfare system in place, you know, you would see a, a completely different demographic trend in America. That's a really good point. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, you know, people like Sargon, they just want to think about thoughts, ideas in terms of, ideas they don't realize that they're biological in origin that they come from a human mind and a human mind is a biological organ which means it's genetically based yeah and of course it would have adapted over the years to their conditions to whatever the people prefer to what works best for that certain group and it would have extended from that and just looking at the different philosophies from certain places i've often said that i, I couldn't 
foresee a national socialist movement working in Britain in the 1930s. I don't think that culturally or spiritually it was um, attuned to adopt that kind of system, whereas Germany, looking at their philosophy, which is maybe slightly more geared towards mysticism, idealism, and determinism, collectivism as a whole, they were better suited for that ideology taking root. And it's kind of the same with France. I mean, France is a weird one because it's been a hotbed of leftist and free market thought. Um, but I, I think that certain cultures would be better, would adopt certain economic and political systems far better than others because there may be genetic reasons given how they um, approach certain economic challenges in more difficult times. Mm. Yeah. So, final points, because we've been going on for nearly two hours. Um, what? How do you see the future of, say, the alt-libertarian movement? Do you think it will grow? And um, could you also finish on how to find you and talk a tiny bit more about your upcoming podcast? Yeah, so... Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, it, the alt libertarian movement has been steadily growing. Uh, I'm I'm not as concerned about uh, the growth anymore since I'm not really concerned with um, trying to revise the libertarian message. But uh, I, I'm I'm just going to be here to solidify that pipeline for any libertarian uh, with some common sense who wants to move on. Uh, and, and really address the problems that they're starting uh, to see. So uh, because, I, I, because of that, I am trying to move forward uh, personally from the alt-libertarian movement and, and still do it. Uh, so in, in, I started a YouTube channel. Uh, I've been completely banned from Facebook. Uh, every device I have is IP banned. I can't even make a site. From account. Facebook? I can't even make a sock account oh, wow. without it getting automatically deleted uh, on any device that I have, uh, like phones, laptops, whatever. Um, so I've, I've been completely banned from Facebook. And so I've decided to name my YouTube channel that I'm starting up banned from Facebook. Uh, <laughs> Orwell's going to drop a, uh, a link to that in the description. And I'll be, I've already got some content up there. It's my videos that I shot from Charlottesville last year. And then uh, coming soon, I'll have a series of uh, conversations. Uh, and I hope to have Orwell on as well. We've discussed it a little bit. Um, and that'll be uh, entitled The LARP Show, The, Liber the Libertarian to Alt-Right Pipeline. Um, <laughs> other than that, um, Gab, uh, at Benji Buckles, B-E-N-J-I-B-U-C-K-L-E-S. Hmm. Okay, so I think that's a pretty good place to stop. If anyone's got any parting words. Nope. Mm, I don't. Not, not really. <laughs> All right, okay, I well, enjoyed it, you guys. Thanks for having me on. Thanks, thanks for, for coming on. on oh, yeah, thanks for coming on. All right, thanks for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And tomorrow there's going to be Waking Up the West, plus I'll probably put a video or two. A uh, big story that I'm going to break tomorrow that hopefully will be picked up by other media outlets as well. Um, it, it, it's it's nothing too like out the blue, but it's expected of, say, American universities. Cheers, guys. Have a good night. <laughs>